co-founder and CEO Jake DeWitt. What would an executive order that perhaps mentions nuclear energy as part of it to, to help power our AI uh, efforts here in the United States, what would that do for Oklo? Yeah, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Um, I think it's a pretty significant opportunity space to build on the executive orders the president signed uh, a little over a month ago that were aimed at actually moving nuclear forward at a pace that, you know, we kind of haven't seen before and deconstraining some of the typical con constraints there. So so we kind of think that if, you know, an EO comes on the artificial intelligence side and powering it, it's just going to move even faster some of the various things around the ecosystem that are otherwise kind of, you know, just slow the process down of deploying plants. And we need as much energy as we can possibly get right now. Well, that is the point, I think. Um, how do micro nuclear power plants play into the AI world or eventually could play into the AI world, Jake? Because they are huge, as I've said before, energy gulpers. Could the micro nuclear power plants even fill the demand? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think that's kind of where the terminology pieces are kind of interesting. At the end of the day, the key thing about nuclear is it's incredibly energy dense, right? Just a golf ball of uranium metal has enough energy content to power one's entire lifetime, right? It's a huge um, material advantage and energy density advantage. So you're going to see nuclear technologies of all types, shapes, sizes come forward and fill various market opportunities here because fundamentally it's just a superior energy source and we're still in the very early innings on it. So small plants really match well with data centers because data centers, while big in the aggregate and take a lot of power, they're actually built out incrementally in smaller chunks. And so we size our plant at 75 megawatts, which really lands in the sweet spot that we see with most data centers that are built out incrementally in chunks of really between 50 and 75 megawatts. Hmm. That's why we sized it that way. And so we can build up with them naturally. If you build too big of a plant, you have a lot of power. You have to figure out how to sell or you might not be able to sell right away. And it's a little bit of a weird mismatch. And if you're too small, you got to build too many. So we found a really nice sweet spot right now on this size. But there will definitely be opportunities for some that are bigger and some smaller. But we really like kind of the positioning we have that way. Well, no matter whether the car is a Ferrari or an SUV, you got to have fuel. And you are very important in the nuclear and in the uranium enrichment area. Uh, the U.S. doesn't have a lot of uranium at this point. I, I do believe the U.S. only produces about one ton annually right now. Um, the Department of Energy estimates we need 40 metric tons uh, by 2030 to power advanced reactors. Uh, how do we do that, especially considering, I mean, everybody's talking about uranium enrichment, considering what happened this weekend with the uranium facilities at, in, in Iran. And I think, you know, people do get concerned because I lived in Ohio and covered news in Ohio. I remember the Fernald uranium plant. And that became a super fun site. It was a mess. It was a disaster. People were very upset. So how do you make sure it's done safely? This is a key thing, right? The industry has modernized a lot. The regulations have stayed up with it. Uh, the point of basically what we can do with new technologies and what we can do with, you know, kind of meeting the regulatory requirements that are out there really do ensure pretty significant safety measures are taken. And at the end of the day, um, the big thing about nuclear is it is one of the safest sources of energy, period, across the ecosystem. But to your question about fuel, it's really a multi-pronged approach. We do, as a country, need to start producing a lot more uranium that we mine, but we also have to take it through the whole supply chain. There's a lot of opportunity to expand enrichment, expand the various pieces around conversion and deconversion and fuel fabrication. Um, and the U.S., you know, back in the 1980s, had more nuclear like production, sorry, uranium production capacity than the rest of the world combined. And we let it atrophy, we let it go. We can bring that back, right? And we can do it better than everyone else. And so those executive orders that happened a couple of weeks ago helped bring that forward. But then it opened the door for other other things that move this even further along because all of that uranium that comes forward conventionally the reactors only use five percent of the, the material available gotcha. or sorry five percent of the fuel that's there recycling unlocks 90 plus percent of that and so what those executive orders do also is push that along and when you create extra demand signals by ai you can unleash this i know i brought it up earlier but like you, it's so important to remember a golf ball of uranium metal would power your entire lifetime and it's a pretty abundant resource so okay. I, again i i feel very excited about what this is setting the stage for for the entire industry to like kind of revive and speak to scale forward in a more modern way um and the eos in the past and i think what we're hoping for comes forward again we'll just further supercharge that jake uh thank you for for talking about this on a pretty important day and and so what i mean your stock is down one percent but uh, year to date it's up 160 percent Clearly, sorry, is that right? Or 500? Hold on.
Yeah, 160 percent, but over the past year, up 552 uh, percent. So we'll see you soon. Thank you, Jake. Sounds good. Thanks for having me.